I'm going to start with the median. And the reason is that I find medians to be useful since they're not so influenced by outliers. This number here could be 60 or 6,000 and the median of this little data set would still be 1. So I'm going to start by thinking about how far each data point is from the median. So this first student who had zero previous statistics courses is different from the median by one course, 0 minus 1. Second student, same thing. She had zero previous courses, so she is 0 minus 1 in terms of her difference from the median. Third student had two previous courses, so she's one away from the median. And this student had six previous courses, so she is five away from the median. So these four differences represent how far each of my data points is from the median. So if I have these four values, that's helpful. Right? What are they equal to? I've got a negative 1, a negative 1, a positive 1, and a 5. And what we'd like to do is summarize them in some way. The problem is that if we just add them together, so if we were to take the mean of these, for example, or even the median, if we take the median of these, the low numbers, the negative numbers, and the positive numbers, so the low and high numbers, the negative and positive numbers, are going to cancel each other out. Right? If I take the median of these four numbers, I'm going to get 0. If I take the mean of these four numbers, I'm going to have negative uh, 1 and negative 1 plus positive 1 is negative 1 plus 5 is uh, 4. The, the big numbers are being brought down by the small numbers. That's not so helpful. right? I don't, I don't want the um, fact that there are some values far below the middle uh, to be canceled out by the fact that there are some values uh, far above the middle. So I need to do something about the fact that some values are negative and some values are positive. And I can think of a couple ideas to handle that. And I bet you can too. One way to handle that would be to take the absolute value of each of these points. So if I take the absolute value of each of these points, each of these differences, I've got a 1, a 1, a 1, and a 5. These are the absolute values of the differences between each data point and the median. Now I have four numbers that won't be canceled out, won't cancel each other out, if I try to average them in some way. So for example, if I take these four numbers, I could take the mean of them. Right? I've got 5, 6, 7, 8 divided by 4 would be 2. That would, 2 would be the mean absolute difference from the median. I could also take the median of these numbers, which is 1. Right? So the smallest number is 1, the biggest number is 5. Then we've got two 1s, and the middle of those is a 1. The median is 1. So it seems like I'm just kind of making this up. I'm taking absolute values. But there is a set of um, ways to measure dispersion that are based on this technique. And it's abbreviated MAD, MAD, but that can mean multiple things. It could mean mean absolute deviation or median absolute deviation. So most commonly, you choose either the mean or the median and stick with that throughout. So here, because I'm seeing how far each data point is from the median, correspondingly, I should report typically the median of these values. So the median absolute deviation here is 1, because the median of the absolute differences from the median is 1. But I also could have obtained the mean absolute deviation. And in order to do that, which would also be abbreviated MAD, right? in order to do that, I could take each of these values and see how far it is from the mean, which was 2 in this data set. So I've got 0 minus 2, 0 minus 2, 2 minus 2, and 6 minus 2. So this difference is negative 2, this difference is negative 2, this difference is 0, and this difference is 4. These are not the same numbers I had before because now I'm seeing how far each data point is from the mean rather than how far each data point is from the median. But I could still take the absolute value of each of these if I wanted to. And typically, because I'm looking at means here, it's conventional to then also look at means here. So I've got 2 plus 2 plus 4 is 8 divided by 4 is 2. So the mean absolute deviation here is 2, and the median absolute deviation was 1. And those are two different measures of dispersion that I could use. But if you have something else you'd rather do, that's OK. If you'd like to take the differences between each of these values in the mode, and then take the mean of the resulting absolute differences, that's OK. That's fine. Uh, that's, you just need to communicate uh, your method to whoever it is that you're trying to describe your data 